Follow the page on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Telegram. Thank you doctors. some of the tool structure and as you can see here we have lots of types of tips and each one of these steps has its function and we can use it in one of the steps of the root canal treatment and I can say that we can use ultrasonics in all the steps of the root canal treatment so the ultrasonics gives us the visibility and the selective cutting efficiency as you can control your tip and point it into one area to work on so you have selective cutting efficiency and these tips we have various types of it so how to modify there are many types of these tips so how to classify these tips first of all we are going to talk about the tip. We have two types. It's either an active tip or non-active tip. And after that, we can go to the side of the instrument, which either smooth or milled. And milled, we mean that it's machine grinded and it gives more cutting efficiency because the smooth one, it has no cutting efficiency at all, but the milled, it has more cutting efficiency. You are like you are using a bird. And also this tip, it can be a diamond coated or non-diamond coated, which is covered by abrasives, like you're using a tapered stone with rounded end, which you are using it for crown preparation. Stainless steel or nickel titanium, the material of the instrument, it can be made of one of these two materials. Of course, stainless steel is much more stiffer. The nickel titanium, it can break easily. And the connection type, which depends on the brand of the ultrasonic you are using. We have so many types of the ultrasonic tips. We have access refinement tips, vibratory tips, bulk removal tips, troughing tips. Before we go to the tips, we have to know what are the advantages of using these ultrasonic tips over burrs or stones, which we use in our access cavity. First of all, as we said, it helps us for the better vision. So we can see more. We can see the whole work field. We are not having a blocked or blind vision during our procedure. We can have a greater control over the instrument because it has a pre bent design which helps us for more accessibility. Also conservatism because it doesn't remove too much tooth structure like the high speed handpiece. And using it for activation of irrigation and production of cativation, which we will talk about it later. What are the application of ultrasounds in endontics? We can start from the crown up to the apical third of the root. So we can use it in the pulp chamber for access refinement, finding hidden and calcified canals, removing of attached pulp stones. While in the coronal and middle thirds, we can use it for in removal of intracanal obstructions like separated instruments, metallic posts, fiber posts, gutta perca. We can use it for activation of irrigation, placement of our sealer inside the root canal, ultrasonic condensation of gutta perca, either the placement of the MTA. And finally, we can use it in the epical third during our surgical endodontics procedure, like for the root and cavity preparation. So I'm going to show you some of my main ultrasonic tips, which I use in my clinic. ED3D, which I use mainly for the access cavity refinement, and I will show you later, the ED6, ED14, and ED60. They are all provided by woodpecker. So, I use the ED3, it has a cutting end and a side cutting also. So it's like a tapered stone with rounded end. I can use it for access cavity refinement, troughing for head and canals, removal of pulp stones. And for those who don't know what's meant by troughing, troughing means like if you are having an orange and you want to peel off the crust of the orange just to reach the slices. So it's the same. We are just peeling the tooth structure or the calcified tooth structure over the NB2 canal or the middle mesial canal. ED6, I can use, it has a, an act, active cutting tip. Nide, I can use it for cuffing of heading canals. Same as the ED3D, but because it has pointed sharp tip, 
you will are going to feel like a drop when you find the hidden canal, either MB2 or mid and mid. I can use it for broken, removal of broken files in the coronal, in the middle, and epical thirds. Removal of the fillings or the cement around posts. Sometimes I can use it for passive ultrasonic irrigation, but it's too risky. The other tip is ED14. It's the same as the ED6, but I can use it only in the coronal and middle thirds. I cannot use it in the epical third during broken files removal because this tip is thicker or larger in size from the ED6. ED60, as you can see here, it looks like a K file. Actually, it's not a K file. These edges or these flutes, it has non cutting flutes. So, it can be used for activation of irrigation, which we call passive ultrasonic irrigation. My other two tips is ED12D, and I would like to call it my joker tip, because I can use it for many, many steps in the root canal treatment. You can use it for the troughing of hidden canals, MB2, and middle mesial. You can remove, use it for removal of pop stones. Sometimes I use it also for removal of the cement around the metallic posts. Sometimes I use it also for the removal of the fiber posts. Last step is ED5D, which is looks like a tapered stone with rounded end, but it's, its size is much smaller than the other one. It can be used also for access cavity refinement, roughing for head and canals, and removal of pulp stones. Here in this case, as you can see, I had a lower molar. This isthmus, I wanted to remove it, and we, that's what we call troughing, like you want to peel it so you can clean all this area and to find the middle mesial canal, and after you shape it, you can fill it beautifully. Let's see this video together. Here I was looking for the middle mesial canal, so I started to do my troughing between the two mesials, the mesiobuccal and the mesiolingual. And as you can see here, I removed the isthmus already between the two mesials. I finished my troughing, and I found the orifice of the middle mesial. I was checking my with my probe that it's actually the orifice. After that, I will just do the shaping. And after finishing the shaping, I will just fill the canal and finish my root canal treatment. And here, as you can see, the middle mesial canal just joined with the mesiobuccal canal. Here, in this case, I was doing an access cavity in a lower molar covered by zirconia crown. So I wanted to do a conservative access cavity, contracted endodontic cavity, but I wanted these walls to be more flared. So I decided to use my ED3D tip, as you can see here. And I started to do some flaring of the walls so that my access cavity is just flared. And I'm not widening my access cavity. I'm just flaring the walls for better accessibility for my piles during shaping and for my obturation procedure. As you can see now, I finished my access cavity refinement and all the walls of the access cavity are just blurred so I can proceed for the next steps. Here, I had a lower second molar with a C-shaped canals. I troughed all over the C-shaped and after that, I found two canals in between. I shaped them and I filled them. In this case, in this upper molar, the MB2 canal was already located in the same orifice with the MB1 canal. So I had to widen the MB1 canal so I can already shape my MB2. But if I wanted to do it with stones or bears using my hand piece, what I'm going to do is only perforation because this area, it has a very thin tooth structure. So I have to be conservative and I have to have 
selective cutting efficiency. So let's see together. Here, I use my ultrasonic tip, which looks like tapered stone, as I told you. And I started to do my orifice refinement, not access cavity refinement, because the world of the access cavity is already done. I widened the orifice, and as you can see here, the orifice is a little bit widened. This selective tooth, I already used low power because I was afraid to cause any perforation even with using my, while using my ultrasonics. I wasn't using any coolant. And as you can see, I have better visibility due to the LED light coming from the handpiece of the ultrasonic device. After that, I will just do some irrigation to remove all the debris. And now you can see how beautifully the orifice refinement is already done. Now, in this case, I had a post, metallic post, which was already present, and I wanted to do retreatment in these tools. It was an upper lateral incisor. So I decided to use my scaling tip. As you can see now, I used a scaling tip. As a cutting tip and side cutting also, but I wasn't only cutting, I wasn't cutting at all. I was just transferring the energy of the ultrasonics to the metallic post. And as you can see here, I'm going in a counterclockwise motion. On the post so it can be unscrewed and going out of the canal. I kept doing my counterclockwise motion around the post, and you will see now that the post will start to dance, and it started to move. I will just hold it with my tweezer and take it out. Some people try to remove the posts using needle stones, which is very, very dangerous because it can, it can end up during, doing perforation or getting a false pathway of the canal. Let's go for this case together. I had a post in this lower right first premolar. I wanted to remove it, but I didn't use any bulk transferring tips. What I used bulk vibratory tips. What I used is one of my end cutting tips only because I wanted to remove the cement around the post first because the, the post was already screwed and cemented at the same time. So I wanted to remove the cement at first and then at the same time while I'm removing the cement, the ultrasonic energy will be transferred to the post. And I'm going in counterclockwise motion as you can see here. But in the mirror, because due to the reflection, you can see that I'm going in a clockwise. Actually, it's always counterclockwise. Now the post started to dance. And please, don't rush. Never ever rush. Even if you see that the post started to dance, just wait. Complete your removing motion, counterclockwise motion. Yes until it's completely dancing. And then you can shift either to needle holder or tweezer. Here I can see that the post is already loose, but it just needed a little counterclockwise motion using the needle holder. So I did my two rounds of counterclockwise motion and the post is removed. Now, as you can see here, that already the cement was already covering the orifice of the canal. So I had to remove the cement all over the orifice of the canal. I used the same tip, which has a cutting tip already, active tip already. Now the cement is removed. 
and I can proceed further with my retreatment procedure. Now let's talk about the ultrasonics and their effect in activation of irrigation. The ultrasonic activation of irrigation produces two main effects, cavitation and acoustic streaming. Cavitation, it can be defined as the formation of thousands of tiny bubbles which rapidly implode, doing an implosion with a very high pressure. So it produces a shock wave, removing all the biofilm and bacteria inside the root canal. The other effect of ultrasonics is acoustic streaming, which produces shear up forces. It will help to remove all the debris outside of the canal. These debris which are produced during instrumentation procedure. Also, it helps us to decrease the time of irrigation. What, as you can see here, the hand only in instrumentation, the shipping procedure is already mixed with your irrigation procedure and it's taking long time. But due to the era of rotary instrumentation, now you can finish your shipping procedure in just no time, and then you are going to spend most of the time doing irrigation. Now, due to the activation of irrigation using ultrasonics, we can already decrease the time of irrigation due to the effect of ultrasonics. So you can see here, in this upper premolar, I filled my access cavity, I filled my access cavity and my canal with sodium hypochlorite, and I will start to activate it using ultrasonics, which is called passive ultrasonic irrigation. As you can see here, this is the effect of ultrasonics. This is the cavitation and acoustic streaming. You can see the micro bubbles everywhere. In this case, I wanted to do activation of irrigation, but at the same time, I wanted to do refreshment of my irrigation, sodium hypochlorite. So I did simultaneous irrigation with activation, as you can see here. Here I was doing only passive ultrasonic irrigation. I put my irrigant inside the root canal. I put my ultrasonic tip in the center of the root canal and I'm just going up and down movements. I'm not touching any wall, just up and down movements. Now I will do simultaneous irrigation and activation. Because already my woodpecker device, it has a container so, which is filled already by sodium hypochlorite. So can you use this irrigant during my activation. So I'm doing it as a refreshment all the time. I'm doing my activation and my irrigation at the same time. So when you finish your activation of irrigation and you do a 3D obturation, you are going to see how sometimes these loops are beautifully filled between the mesiobacal and mesolingual canal in lower mudder, or you are having a lateral canal. In this case, I was doing a retreatment for a lower right first molar. As you can see here, I had a sinus tract, and that was the sinus tract, the pericard tracing x-ray, and that was a pre-optive x-ray. As you can see here, I had a big lesion all over. And when the lesion is located laterally, I always suspect a lateral canal. So I removed all the cataperca, but already the case came with the cataperca already extruded in the periapical area. I didn't try to remove, I just kept it. I removed all the gutta perca inside the root canal and I did my post space. And as you can see here, due to the activation of irrigation, I had a lateral canal already filled with my bioceramic sealer. In this case, I had a broken file in the lower left first premolar in the lingual canal. I finished shaping of the buccal canal and then in the lingual canal, I started to do my bypass procedure. I was trying to bypass the file because I wanted to be very conservative in this part. Also because this file was already 
out of my accessibility. I had no straight, straight, I had no straight line access to this file. So after bypassing the file, I kept my K file and I started to attach my ultrasonic or to touch with this file with my ultrasonic tip to transfer all the ultrasonic energy to this file, which is already touching the broken fragment in the epical part. And as you can see, the ultrasonic energy transferred indirectly to the broken part of the file and then it's removed. Here, I finished shaping of the canal and that was my obturation. And you can, you can see here already in the buccal canal, I had a lateral canal also. Let's explain it again in this graph. As you can see here, this is the broken file which was inside the root canal. And this is my K file. I already bypassed the broken file. Also, it can be used to remove the silver points. So whenever you have a silver point inside the root canal, whenever you have a broken file, just bypass it with the K file. And then you can use your ultrasonic tip to touch the K file, which will indirectly transfer the ultrasonic energy to the broken fragment or to the silver point. This technique is called the Krell approach to remove of silver points or broken files. Now in this upper left central, I had a broken file also and I had gutta perca inside the root canal. I removed the broken file using ultrasonics and now I removed the gutta perca inside the root canal. But most importantly, after you remove the gutta perca from inside the root canal, you have to be sure that the whole canal doesn't have any remnants of gutta perca. So I always take an X-ray after removal of gutta perca. And as you can see here, I can see that there are remnants of gutta perca, old gutta perca covering the root canal dentine. So what I did is passive ultrasonic irrigation. And as you can see now, all the remnants of gutta perca came out of the canal. Master cone X-ray and I finished my obturation. Here, in this case, I did troughing in order to find the MB2. And after I found the MB2, I was trying to do my obturation. And this is the master cone. I put it inside the MB2 canal. And you can see it from the mesiobuccal orifice because they have confluence together, sharing the same epical foramen. Also, it can be confirmed while injecting of my bioceramic sealer in the MB2 canal. So I was injecting my bioceramic sealer now in the MB2, and you can see how beautifully the bioceramic sealer is just coming out of the mesiobuccal canal, confirming the confluence of both canals. Here, here I had a white material inside the distal root of this lower left second molar. Actually, I don't know what is this material, but it was a little bit hard to remove. So I started to use my ultrasonic tips, which has a cutting tip to dig into this white material until I removed it. And then that was my master cone X-ray and that's my obturation or post-optic X-ray. That was a series of three treatments. Here, in this case, I had an upper lateral incisor, upper canine, upper first premolar and upper second premolar. And that was a pre-optive X-ray. I wanted to remove the pulse and I removed it using ultrasonics and then the needle holder in a counterclockwise. After that, I removed all the cataperca from inside the root canal, as you can see here. After I removed the cataperca, this is my master cone. And now I finished my obturation with the post post insertion and restorative part. Here in this case, it was referred to me to do retreatment for the upper right lateral. So I decided to remove the gutta perca. And after I removed the gutta perca, as you can see here, that was my K file. I reached the working lens, but I had remnant of gutta perca in the epical third of the canal. So I started to remove it using rotary instruments. Still, I had a very small, tiny remnant of gutta perca in the epical third. I started to use edge file to remove it. And by the way, 
I never ever use edge files to remove Gata Perka. Now for about 10 years, I have never used edge file to remove Gata Perka. I always use K file because I don't like edge files due to the high separation incidence. But in this case particularly, I used edge file to engage the Gata Perka in the epical two millimeter as a trial to remove it. But I failed also because I had about one millimeter or one millimeter and a half of Gata Perka still not removed. So I decided here to shift the case intentionally into an open apex case. What I did is I used one of my ultrasonic tips. Remember, I told you that sometimes I use the ultrasonic tips we were used for removal of calcifications or the ultrasonic tips, which can be used for uh, MB2 or middle mesial troughing. I use them as an activation of irrigation. And at the same time, it will remove parts of the root canal dentine in the apical part with the gutta perca. Mm -hmm. So I had an open apex after all. But it's easy for me to manage an open apex case than to leave gutta perca, which may cause failure afterwards. So I placed my MTA apical plug using the MAP1 system. And after that, I finished my 3D obturation. Here in this case, I did my access cavity, but I had the roof here covering the distal buccal canal. So I started to use my ultrasonics to remove it. Let's see together. I started to do my access cavity refinement for upper right second molar. And of course, in these cases, we have lots of difficulties in gaining accessibility and in gaining visibility. So you can never manage to do access cavity refinement using your contra hand piece. You have to shift already to ultrasonics. And as you can see here, let's pause for a while. As you can see here, I got the distal buccal canal. So I have the mesial buccal canal, I have the distal buccal canal, and here comes the palatal canal. If I try to use my high speed hand piece to remove all this two structure, I would end up doing perforation. And in an upper right second molar, having difficult accessibility and difficult visibility, it will be very, very, very challenging to use high speed hand piece for access refinement. Now I started shaping using W3 Pro rotary system by Woodpecker. I started to do the corona flaring using W0, having a tip size of 17 and taper of 12%. I use it for all the canals. And as you can see, I'm using the AI endomotor by Woodpecker. I always prefer this endomotor due to having a micro head. So it gives me a better visibility in these challenging cases. So now I will go to my glide path step using W1 file having tip size of 18 and taper 5%. I'm going to use it for all the canals, for the mesiobuckle, for the distobuckle, and for the palatal canal. Actually, it was one of the most difficult cases. The patient had a limited mouth opening. I was having difficult accessibility and difficult visibility. But I could manage at the end. Now, using the W2 file, having tip size of 25 and taper 6%, and I'm using it for all the canals which is my master epical file for the mesial buckle and for the distal buckle. For the palatal canal,
American ally always enlarge up to 35 taper 6 or 40 taper 6 according to the canal. Sometimes I use 40 taper 4, and it always depends on the initial size of the canal. You can see now, after my shaping procedure, this is a mesobuccal canal, this is a distobuccal orifice, and this is a palatal orifice. Here in this case, I was doing root canal treatment for a lower right first molar. And after I finished my shaping procedure, this is my master cone x-rays, I did my passive ultrasonic irrigation activation. And after that, you can see in the distal canal how beautifully I had a lateral canal coming out of the main canal. And it's filled with my bioceramic sealer. That was a strategic upper right third molar. And as you can see here, I did my troughing to get my MB2 canal, and I finished shaping of the four canals in this upper right third molar. And after that, that was my post optive x ray. And you can see that I had some of my bioceramic sealer extruded already from the root canal. I'm not worried about this extrusion because we all know from the literature that the incidence of epical extrusion of the bioceramic sealer is much more than resin sealers. But we are not concerned or we are not worried due to the biocompatibility and bioactivity of the bioceramic material. Here I had a C-shaped lower left second molar. I finished shaping of the three canals, but all the interconnecting spaces I cannot shape. All I can only do is clean. So I started my passive ultrasonic irrigation, and as you can see here, all the interconnecting spaces is filled with my bioceramic sealer. You can never remove the tissue in these interconnecting spaces by files. The only way is to remove or to clean these spaces is by ultrasonic activation with your elegant material. Here, I was doing retreatment to this lower left first molar. And as you can see here, I had a lateral lesion. And after I finished my preparation of the canals, I did my ultrasonic activation, and here comes a beautifully filled lateral canal in the post optive X-ray. That was a molarized upper left first molar, first premolar. These cases are one of the hardest cases to shape, because sometimes, as you can see here in the post optive X-ray, the buccal orifice was already the main pathway for the two buccal canals, the mesiobuccal canal and the distobuccal canal. So I had to widen this orifice. I cannot widen this orifice using my tapered stone rounded end uh, or my burr. I can only use ultrasonics. So what I did is orifice refinement. I widened, I widened the orifice of the buccal canal so I can go and shape the mesiobuccal canal and that is to buccal canal using my ultrasonics same as the case which uh, for the video which we saw before for the upper second molar where uh, the, MB, the mb1 and the mb2 canals they were sharing the same orifice together and i did orifice refinement so here i could gain patency in the three canals in the three roots after that i did my orifice refinement so i can shape and then after that to fill the three canals that was a lower left second molar. That was a lower right third molar. So after I finished shaping, as you can see here, this is, these bubbles are due to the activation of irrigation. I finished my activation of irrigation, and here comes the post-optive X-ray. By the way, as you can see in the pre-optive X-ray here, I can never manage to do straight line axis here, except while with using ultrasonics. Because if I try to manage that with my contra handpiece or high speed handpiece, I'm going to widen the axis cavity and I will never be conservative as much as I can. So I wanted to be conservative as much as I can in this case. Here I had a broken file in this case and a nearly obliterated canals in the mesial root. So I managed to remove the broken file, but unfortunately, 
a small piece of the broken file remained, but I could bypass it. And after that, as you can see, I have three distal canals, mesobuccal, sorry, distal buccal, distal lingual, and middle distal canal. And this is the two mesial canals already filled. Here comes an upper left first premolar with a dancing roots. And I could manage it due to the axis cavity, which I did. In this case, I had a lower right second molar, which was referred to me to do root canal treatment. It has an S curved roots, and it could be managed easily using ultrasonics to gain straight line axis cavity. Lower left first molar with accessory distal lingual root. And as you can see here, beautifully filled. And yes, here comes an interesting case for a lower left first molar with an accessory distal lingual root. It was prepared to me to do root canal treatment, and that was my working lens x-ray. But unfortunately, while I was doing my root canal instrumentation, I broke a file in the ethical third of the distal root. I wanted to remove this broken file conservatively as much as I can. So I started to bypass the broken file. And here, as you can see, I already bypassed the broken file. And this K file, which is already bypassing the broken fragment in the epical part, I will just touch the K file with my ultrasonic tip. So I will transfer indirectly the ultrasonic energy into the K file and hence to the broken fragment in the ethical part. And then I managed to remove it, as you can see here. And that was my master cone x ray. And this is my post operative x ray. This technique, which is already transferring the energy indirectly to the broken part in the ethical part, as we discussed before, it's called Krell approach for removal of silver points or for broken files. Remember this case, which I told you about for the retreatment of the lower right first molar, which has a lateral lesion, so I have a lateral canal. This case came to me after seven months, and as you can see, the follow-up x-ray shows a very good healing and bone formation for the mesial root. As you can see here, all this reducent area is already filled with bone, and I can see a very beautiful healing after just seven months of follow-up. Here in this case, I did root canal treatment for upper lateral incisor and the upper canine. I had a huge lesion. Uh, I finished my root canal treatment on three sessions. Each session, after I finished my shaping, I just put intracanal medication, calcium hydroxide, and then that was a post-optive x-ray after four months. And as you can see, nice bone formation. And after one year follow-up, very good bone formation and very good healing result. And I'm waiting for another six months for another one year and have follow-up. And what I can say is just do the best for any case and for every case and be sure that healing... Will Follow the page on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Telegram. Thank you, doctors.